Hey, what's up guys? It's Fei Wu from Face World Media. I'm so excited about this video. It's all about Zoom webinar and all the tips that every host should know. Why? If you need a Zoom webinar, chances are that you are going to run this meeting for a larger group of people. It doesn't matter whether it's 30 people or 300 people, you want to make sure you get it done right. Especially if you're a solopreneur, if you're a mom and pop shop, or if you're a corporate executive who's doing this on your own for the first time. You may or may not have a virtual assistant or an assistant at all. So what can you do to make sure you have a seamless experience that you look like a professional and you look like you've been doing this all along? Welcome, and I'm going to show you everything you need to know. Before we get started, I want to mention that this video is supported and sponsored by Restream. Restream allows you to multi-stream to platforms, including but not limited to Facebook, personal profile, groups, pages, Twitter, Periscope, YouTube, LinkedIn, and so much more. So first you will see that we are now in a practice session. As mentioned earlier, attendees cannot join until that we start the webinar. And you can also see on the screen right now, there is a panelist that is me. And that is my mom's gorgeous Buddha painting right there in my room. So let me go ahead and click on participants so you can actually see who's who here. So let me reduce the size of the window. So now you can see that there is host and there is a co-host. Um, so let me go ahead and just name this, rename this. Okay. Now, even though you see that my icon is the same me as a host and also the same icon, but pretend that the other option that you see here is just some other panelist who joined me. Okay. So in case that you have someone who joined as a panelist by mistake, or you no longer want that person to be a panelist, all you have to do is click on this withdraw co-host permission button. And now this person is just a panelist without being a co-host. So I invited my mom. And so from here, if you invite someone as a panelist to join in and you change your mind, what you can do is you can change this person's role, right? From the current panelist to attendee. So as you can see, literally Xiang just left as a panelist and became an attendee over here uh, on this tab. So you can allow this person to talk as well, which is a feature because otherwise attendees will not be able to sound, will not be able to speak, but to move this person back or promote this person back to panelists is also available. So what you can do is you can move this person, you can move any attendee over to be a panelist. A lot of people, a lot of hosts don't know this option. It's actually very important. Otherwise, you know, I sometimes have parents or other members of the family to join into a webinar and they panic because they share a family account. They don't know what to do, but then you as a host, you will know what to do. So in this case, I'm going to promote Xiang back to be a panelist, just like this. See, there's a little notification. Attendees now reduced to zero. Now you have the other person as a panelist. This is super important. Now, whenever you're ready to broadcast, uh, what you can then do is click on start webinar. When you click on start webinar, now the webinar is live. I mean, it doesn't mean it's live streaming anywhere. It's just that people attendees are able to watch this. And you want to keep that in mind because um, the label, the banner is very obvious on purpose. You definitely don't want to run an entire webinar without making it public. Now let's talk about views. This is the second most important thing, which is uh, hosts or webinar hosts often wonder what are people seeing? What are they looking at? The most important things are you have these views options already built in, which is speaker view or gallery view, just like this. Right. A lot of you guys are already familiar with this. However, what you don't realize is that, you know, what's most frustrating is by the hope, by having the host switch the view to gallery view doesn't mean that your attendees are watching exactly what you're watching. So instead, what you want to do is what you want to do is actually go to the more button here and under attendee video layout, you want to make sure you select the right option. That is huge because I made the mistake of thinking that my attendees are seeing whatever I'm seeing. And an hour and a half later, they said, you know what? It was great, Faye, to see the active speaker view, but it would have been even better if I am able to see other people's uh, expressions. So what you want to do is, especially if this is an interview with multi, uh, multiple panelists and a single host, is you can either follow the host view. If I choose that now, my attendees are looking at this because this is my view. Or what you can do is click on more again and change it to gallery view, 
right? So the, what's the difference here? The difference is if you follow the host view, uh, in this case, if my attendees follow my view, I can be changing between the active speaker and the gallery view, and they're going to follow exactly what I'm seeing. But if you're certain you want everybody to see either the active speaker or the gallery view, then you want to have these pre-selected. In, uh, in fact, I recommend all the webinar hosts to have a little checklist, personal checklist that are tailored to your organization, to your meeting needs, so you'll never forget it. Now we're on to these more options. There are a few things that may be intriguing to you, such as, you know, asking everybody to unmute or asking uh, participants to mute upon entry. You can, you have a lot of control as a host, essentially. Um, so you can play a sound. I mean, I don't typically play around with this, especially if you have a lot of people joining your webinar. Like, why do you want to play a sound when people arrive or when they leave? Lock webinar is interesting. I think with password protection, um, there is just a lot more security for Zoom these days. So if you believe that everybody has shown up or you don't want anybody to be late for the webinar, um, then you can just lock a webinar. I haven't really uh, needed to do that because, you know, if I'm running a concert, if there are more attendees showing up, I kind of don't really care, you know, more the merrier. That's everything you basically need to know for the more options. So now let's take a look at the Q&A. Right now there is, uh, the Q&A is open, um, but this is the window you're looking at. Nobody has asked a question yet. So I'm gonna be faking a question, faking myself as an attendee and ask a question. First, I'm gonna move Xiang to be a attendee. So now you can just see me right here and I'm going to ask a question. The, there's one feature called raise hand. So I'll show you what it looks like. So somebody raised um, her hand. Uh, what I can do is I can lower that hand. I can promote that person to come join me as a panelist or allowed to talk. So another option uh, is simply ask a question. So I'm gonna say, let's ask a question. Hi, what's the weather like? So also here, um, this uh, attendee can actually choose to list or show her name, but she can also choose to ask a question anonymously as well. So what's the um, weather like right here? I can say I will answer live or I can type the answer. So once um, I answer this live, what I can do is just done. So, you know, the weather in Boston here is great. It's about 55 degrees. And when I'm done, I just simply click on done. And here is the answer. And, but I can also choose to type an answer. So, um, here's, uh, more to my answer, dot, dot, dot. And you can send privately or you can send publicly, right? And you can also delete the answer. There's some options here uh, that are quite helpful. So that's the Q and A feature right there. There's another feature people really like to use to help the audience stay engaged, which is the polling option right here. So you can ask a question as you notice that sometimes it's easier to prepare these questions ahead of time. I would certainly agree with that. So here, when you say ask a question, you're bounced right into uh, the Zoom setup. So add a poll. So color question. What's your favorite color? green, red, yellow. So I can add another question similarly, but here I'm just gonna click on save. So once that color is there, you're able to see it ahead of time. So again, it's much more helpful to actually cre create these questions ahead of time. Now I can come back to my meeting and click on polling again right here. So when you select polling directly in your webinar, this, this question is not gonna automatically show up right away. Uh, so instead you're going to look at it, have, you know, make certain edits if you need to, and that will bounce you right back to the page, which is kind of convenient just in case if there's a typo, if something needs to be changed, but otherwise you can launch the question right away to do that. Um, you can click on launch poll and by default, this question is posed at all the attendees, but if you want to include the panelists as well, you can simply use this check mark. That's it. Once you start a, a poll process, uh, you will notice that there's a green bar and there's a time limit and uh, you can basically end the poll at any time. So I just pretended to be the attendee on my phone and I was able to submit an answer right away. And as more answers come in, you're able to see the results calculated in real time, which can be really fascinating. Uh, one key point is that these questions don't have to be sophisticated. Uh, it's I ideally these questions should be very scannable, relatable, and the results should be interesting and relevant. So let's end this right now.
Here, I can also click on share results or I can relaunch the poll. So share results, everybody gets to see what the results are. So I think it's safe to say that to share the results and the questions, you can give people just, you know, about a minute or a couple of minutes, depending on the number of questions. If you're unsure and if the questions are important as they should be, and if you're unsure how much time you should give to people, you can always run a simple test with your friends and family or with people who work with you. Last but not least, I want to talk about something that's on your screen that you may ignore, which is you can also go live with your webinar content. Check it out, clicking on the three dots down here and choose live on Facebook, workplace by Facebook, YouTube, or custom live streaming services. Now, when you first come into webinar, you will notice that the last option live on custom live streaming services is not there. That scared me because I like to multi-stream with Restream as much as possible. So let me go ahead and show you where that option is right on Zoom's website. Turns out there's a hidden path. So you need to go to webinars under account management webinar settings and next to in webinar settings, click on edit to enable custom live streaming service right there. So let me show you where that is on my screen. As mentioned, go to account management. And then here are all the hidden webinar settings right here. This is the page you really want to study carefully because a lot of people are not looking here. Maybe they don't need the advanced options, but it's really good to know that you have all of these uh, available at your fingertips. So uh, don't just assume that something is wrong. Um, look through these and I tend not to I tend not to manipulate that uh, if I don't need to, but if you scroll all the way down here in webinar settings, you're going to click on edit and make sure you check the last option here called custom live streaming service. And this is the only way for you to connect live streaming services, third party tools, such as restream. Once you're done editing this field, make sure you hit save changes and you're all set. So as you can see, these are the most important features every single Zoom webinar host should know. Of course, there are more that you can do for your attendees, for your panelists. In this case, especially if you're facilitating with multiple panelists, it's really important for you to start a test. If you're running, whether uh, a facilitated sessions or if you're presenting with other panelists, it's really important that you run a test. If 15 minutes is all you have, that's much, much better than not having any time rehearsing at all. So earlier this year, I found myself facilitating running a lot of these musical concerts for people who are stuck um, because of the pandemic and to help musicians to get their voices, their music out there. Uh, it was proven to be very, very helpful, especially with uh, performers from around the world, different time zones. It was just critical for us to absolutely consider rehearsal, sometimes more than once to check your camera, your sound, your lighting, everything. So we do have a separate video to teach you how to do all of that, the right camera and to look and sound your very best. Thank you so much for watching this. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and help each other out. I absolutely love this community. And thanks to all of you for making this a reality. I love creating content on YouTube and I cannot wait to see you again. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do. And I'll see you in the next one.